Now for Global Business Updates, Rotus Udiri joins us. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, Dr. Abasi. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Rufai. I cannot wait to share a new artificial intelligence update with you all and the world. But let's get through the preliminary stuff first. Oil finally climbing above uh, $69. Uh, Brent crude is now at 71 So $71.39. Gaining a little bit. Hurricane Francine battering the Gulf of Mexico. So you've had some shutdowns. So still low, though. Look at where um, Nigeria is. Our benchmark is still $77.96. We're still very low. That is a story with oil. Well, let's get to Asian stocks. Asian stocks uh, rebounded this morning, all in bullish territory, thanks to comments from Jensen Huang uh, at uh, the head of NVIDIA. He was at a te technology conference hosted by Goldman Sachs. He talked you know, a lot about what is to come in the future. Markets in the U.S. closed positive. Asian markets liked it uh, as well. UK, you were just talking about the UK a few moments ago, the Labour Party setting up the NHS back in 1948. UK growth is still stagnant. Stagnating, zero percent growth. You know, UK they, they report their GDP month on month. Zero percent growth in July. It follows the zero percent growth they had in June. This is still very much a headache for Keir Starmer, and that is the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, you see them pulling back on subsidies for um, heating for pensioners, and also that reports they release for the NHS. That is just an excuse to either downsize or tax people more to support it because growth is just not there. You see the numbers um, in front of you. Let's get to the ECB. The European Central Bank is going to be making their rate decision later on today. It is expected, since inflation has fallen down to their around their 2% range, that we might actually get a rate cut from Christine Lagarde and the European Central Bank. Speaking of inflation, Dr. Abati previewed this yesterday. Uh, we did get U.S. inflation uh, coming in at 2.5% year-on-year in August, falling to a level not seen since February of 2021 decelerating further from June of 2024. That was 2.9%. We are all but certain to get a rate cut from the Federal Reserve. I think the debate now is whether it will be 25 basis points or if it will be 50 uh, basis points. Let's get back to tech. Let's get back to technology. We are going back to Mario Draghi, Super Mario, his 400-page uh, plus report uh, on the EU competitiveness. There was a particular quote I pulled out because I, 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 this is my preview for this new AI updates I'm about to share with you. He says here, no EU company with a market cap over 100 billion euros has been set up from scratch in 50 years, while all six US companies with a valuation above 1 trillion euros have been created in this period. He was trying to make the case that the EU needs to be more competitive, which brings me to my highlights of today. Google Labs, there's a tweet in front of you from Google Labs. Google Labs is part of Google's um, AI center where they put out new tools for artificial intelligence. What Google Labs has put out is something called Notebook LM. Notebook LM, and we should toggle between the tweets and the Notebook LM page or, or in front of you. Notebook LM is a virtual artificial intelligence uh, research assistant. And what it does is it takes data that you, you feed to it and it summarizes it. So the data can be in Google Docs, it can be slides, it can be research. What it does is to summarize it. But here's the thing. And now, by the way, this is part of Gemini. Gemini is Google's uh, big artificial intelligence project. So they are all little subsets within Gemini that are supposed to be able to process data. So the update here, this was trending on social media. Many people were playing around with this. They've re released what is called audio overview. So what Notebook LM does is it takes the data that you give it, whether you are a research assistant in an asset management company, whether you are a journalist working at Arise News, whether you are uh, in a in lab, wherever you are, the data that you put together in a document, if you feed it to you, it will, it, will, it will summarize it. But here's the thing. What they've now done is that Audio LM has created two artificial intelligence agents, a female voice and a male voice, and it turns your data into a podcast episode. You heard Rufai mentioning um, uh, the MSNB uh, anchor, her podcast earlier on when he was talking about Trump, Russia, and so on and so forth. So I decided to play with it myself, right? So here is what I did. Let me give you a little bit of background into how we prepare our interviews at the Global Business Report. Like any other business outfit in any media, uh, re media center, when we have a Bismarck Rewane or uh, Dr. Yemi Kale, you know, or anybody else that is big on numbers, we prepare a document. We have the name of the individual, we take GDP, 
inflation, whatever it is we're talking about. So I said, let me just play with this thing. I went back to March of 2023, and I took my interview with Dr. Yemi Kali, the former um, statistician general of the Bureau of Statistics. This was in March of last year, before, of course, the new administration was set to take over. And we're talking about all the challenges they were going to face. Now, you are about to listen to a podcast summary of that document that I fed to the artificial intelligence model. Now, keep in mind, this is an, it's Google, so it's American. So they pronounce his name as Yemi Kale, as opposed to Yemi Kale. Take a listen to this uh, amazing theme and pay attention. All right, so you guys know Nigeria's economy has been uh, a hot topic lately, especially with the new leadership and all the changes happening. Yeah, it's definitely a crucial time for them. And we wanted to really get into the nitty gritty, see what's what. Right. So we brought in the big guns for this one. Oh, is that right? Dr. Yemi Kale. Okay, yeah. 10 years. Wow. Statistician general, if anyone knows the score, it's him. For sure. Yeah. Nobody better. So we're diving into his March 27th interview, the one on Arise TV. I remember that, yeah. Plus, we've got some of his other insights we'll be weaving in. But um, think of this deep dive as like your cheat sheet, breaking down where Africa's biggest economy is headed and all the bumps in the road. And there are a few. It's a... Uh... Well, let's just say the decisions made this year are going to echo for a long time. Dr. Kale called it a transition year, and I think that sums it up perfectly. It really does. So we're talking low government revenue, a pile of debt, and inflation that's hitting everyone's wallets pretty hard these days. And unemployment. Can't forget about those numbers. They're a whole story on their own. For sure. And speaking of hitting wallets, you actually messaged us about the fuel subsidies and what might happen if those go away. You mentioned kids not being able to afford transport to school, families struggling even more with food costs. Yeah, it's not just numbers on a screen. These are real impacts, like people's lives. Exactly. And that's the tough part. I mean, necessary evil gets thrown around a lot when we talk fuel subsidies. But what's the alternative, really? Could that money be used better somewhere else? Education, healthcare, you name it. That's the million near era question. And it's uh, one Dr. Kale digs into because you know those rising food prices you're worried about? Yeah. Transportation costs are a huge part of that. So, yeah, removing subsidies would hurt. But is there a smarter way to help the people who need it most without completely tanking the country's finances? It's like trying to, I don't know, fill up a bathtub with a leaking pipe instead of just <laughs> fixing the pipe in the first place. Right? Exactly. You got it. I, look, I just, I, I was I was blown away. I was just blown away. Two uh, quick points before we round off. Uh, GTCO, my word, they released their second quarter earnings um, for 2024. GTCO now, if you combine the $509 billion in pre-tax profit they made in the first quarter to $450 plus billion in the second quarter, GTCO is now the first bank to cross a trillion naira uh, in pre-tax profit. Now, of course, as we've indicated on there, about almost half of that was uh, FX uh, revaluation uh, gains. Uh, but it, it's, we're, going to, we're going to compile all the banks when they've all released their half-year profits. But massive for GTCO. And finally, you did see Adefemi Akinsoya on the newspaper review looking at the Vanguard. Just want to remind everyone that that front page story on the Vanguard, on the IMF saying that the government should uh, keep, keep in mind the vulnerable when you know you are raising fuel, uh, fuel prices, that came from the IMF. That was from our Arise News interview with Dr. Christian Ebeke. So when people are trying to talk about the IMF is saying this and the IMF is saying that, just remember that the IMF cares for the people uh, as well. That's, that's our update uh, very, for today. Very big hypocrisy, you know, between, uh, I don't know, because is it between you and Dr. Ebeke? After you, after the IMF knows the consequences of removing the subsidy that's going to hurt the people, they are not saying care for the people. It's just like you beating me at the back and I say, don't worry, don't worry, I'll yes. rub your back. No, IMF just reminds me like a rat. You know, I went to boarding school and rats used to bite our legs then in boarding school and be blowing us at the same time. That's what IMF is doing. They will bite your leg and be blowing. That's what the IMF is doing. But Rotus, you raised a very strong point. Europe has not innovated in a while. In fact, I remember when President Macron was running for election, he brought out an interesting stat that said in the CAC 40, there had been no company that has done like a valuation of about 50 billion or thereabouts, 60 billion in the last over 50 years or thereabouts. That's the Paris Stock Exchange. So that shows you that Europe, uh, Europe has not innovated in a while. And what are the problems with Europe? Number one, culture. America has a more open culture towards innovation. Europe doesn't have. So how are they going to be able to meet America? It starts with them even opening up in the first place. Most of the people that came to to innovate in America are immigrants. 
Those are the same people who Trump want to shut the border against today. The likes of Albert Einstein that came to change the science trajectory in America after the Second World War all came from Europe. Europe needs to be more accommodating. Europe needs to shift its culture. Europe needs to provide capital and an enabling environment. I know France is trying. There's this thing called business France that they normally do that whatever startup you are, they say come and start up in France. And they give you the opportunity, they give you a certain city. I've had friends, you know, from Nigeria that have taken up that opportunity. But how much of them are doing those things? Apart from countries like Estonia and the likes that are doing a lot of innovation, how much countries are doing all of those things? So Europe needs to open up for it to be competitive. And also, Europe needs to tell a certain Maria Vestager to cool down on this EU anti-competition wahala. It's chasing people out of Europe. Margaret, Margaret. Margaret, Margaret yeah. All right. So um, for Europe, one of the things that that report highlights, of course, like you've mentioned, innovation is one of the big challenges of lagging competitiveness. They also, um, it also cites uh, climate change, security, and the fact that Europe is not leveraging its size to be more competitive. It's not just lagging behind the United States of America. It's also lagging uh, behind China as well. And very soon, I mean, we've seen more uh, countries emerge as potential technology giants. And it's, it's interesting that this is coming out just now. You know, it, it's baffling that all these years, 50 years down the line, not being able to um, raise um, big dollar company um, organizations, and yet just waking up as it seems now. And I am hoping that they're not waking up too late, especially with the fact, again, Brexit, Brexit and the UK not being part of it, adding that much you know, pressure on them. They talked about overregulation, we talked about them not being open enough, and so not sure just how quickly they're going to come out of this, um, you know, this lull in, com in competition. But beyond that, it's also their opportunity to invest. I think you highlighted that earlier this week when you brought this story in the first instance, that they must invest a lot to be able to come to, you know, come into the competition back again. But let me just say very quickly about the notebook LM, um, Rotus. Excellent innovation, but I'm just thinking of all the potentials for fraud. And I'm thinking that regulation, regulation, and tight regulation to ensure that what is meant to be such an impressive and excellent um, invention does not become a big problem for the world in a few years down the line. OK, I would like to talk about inflation. CPI, US CPI uh, figures came in yesterday. Uh, core inflation at about 0.3%. Uh, core inflation is energy and food prices excluded. Uh, from the figures. But the wider inflation figure was 0.2%. Now, in year-on-year uh, -year calculations, as you have uh, indicated on the screen, it was 2.5% uh, by August. It was 2.9%. What that means is that there is a cooling of inflation in the United States. And the expectation in the markets and among investors is that, look, it's not a question of whether rates will be cut. Rates will be cut. But it's about, you know, to what extent uh, on September 18, when Federal Reserve comes in. Some people, about 85% of them are saying, we are expecting 25 basis points, you know, cut in inflation. Uh, some 15% are saying, oh, they are expecting 50 basis uh, points. But what we know is that borrowing rate in the United States now is still at 5.25% to 5.50% in Europe. There is a consensus among the ECB governing council that rates should go down and that the uh, ECB is closer to achieving uh, the 2% rate. Uh, the last time they, they reduced rate was, you know, uh, in June. In July, all of them said, no, let us leave it as it is. But today, ahead of the United States, the ECB is likely to reduce rate. The other major story is Boeing. There's going to be a vote today by over 30,000 uh, workers to decide on the decision that was taken under Otberg, the new leader, you know, uh, whether or not they agree to it. If they do not agree to it, there will be a strike, perhaps tomorrow, because if they disagree, there will be a second vote. So Boeing is trying to uh, reorganize itself and to reposition itself. What it has offered the workers, will they accept it? That is the question.